this might explode. So I'm going to hold tight and hit right in the base going up. <sighs> okay. Check this out. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've not had that happen. So I'm saving this. That is crazy. So it took off the mass right there. I don't know why it came off in two pieces like that. What? <laughs> okay. Cool. In one of my last videos, I made this quartz point. Quartz arrowhead, quartz spear point out of cobble that I found on a trail. And I'm on another trail now. And there's just rocks everywhere. And whenever you're in an area like this, you could find stuff to nap. I could easily make a point like that out of something like this. So if you're looking for stuff for survival, anywhere along a, a river or creek or stream, you should be able to find stuff that will flake for arrowheads and spear points. Yeah. That looks nice. That's a good flint. Super salty, super thick bacon. I'm not eating that. I look over here. And that's flint. I just randomly found flint at a fire pit. The hell? Yeah. I'm not sure what kind of flint this is. Might be like basalt, I don't know. I don't know of anything that's black like this around here. But I'm gonna test it. Ooh. That's flint. Do one more. Yeah. That looks nice. That's a good flint. Huh. So, this is what good flint looks like. There's no worked edges or anything, so this is not an artifact. This piece right here you could easily turn into an arrowhead. I have no idea what kind of flint this is. I'll have to look into it. So the value biscuit is like super salty, super thick bacon. I'm not eating that. Sodium nitrate, sodium nitrate, and salt. No. No. And I realized there were shards of flint sticking out of the ground so I get out of the SUV and I'm setting up camp and I'm looking around and there's evidence of people making stone tools there there's flakes there's little knives there's little hide scrapers there's just tools everywhere at this campsite I pulled in here and right here was a bunch of flakes for cutting and skinning 
And here's where we were cooking. And all around there was um, skinning tools. And over here where Leah was sitting, I started to notice some hide scraping tools. So here's the fire pit. And all of these are tools. Like, here's a knife. That's a knife. There's little, you know, scrapers everywhere. And just look, it's, it goes, it just goes and goes. And we're sitting, literally, sitting on these tools. I believe it's a, a type of rhyolite in uh, North Carolina here. I got, you know, I did some research and I found that there was flint in the creek and I got really excited because I've been looking for a fairly local source of flint that I could just, you know, unlimited without damaging anything, without messing up any archaeological sites, without, you know, completely being ethical, just take it out of a creek or a river where it's, you know, rocks like this. So I get down there and I found one and I busted it open and it's junk. It's uh, some of the toughest stuff I've ever worked. It's very coarse. It's very, you can't really, you can make cutting, cutting tools with it, but you can't do, from what I, the little bit I experimented with it, I did not like it. Um, I wasn't able to get too much rhyolite. The stuff that I did get, I got maybe small pieces like that that were decent. So let me give you a little tip. Fire pit soaking wet. I have a little bit of probably dry wood under the tarp. So if you ever have you never camp and it starts raining, throw your tarp on top of your firewood. Firewood. The other thing you could do is if you want to start a fire quickly, you look for a pine tree and you look for this. Now that's called, well, that's pine sap. And if you look at it, it's very sticky. Now I'll show you a little trick with this. If you come over to the, come on, if you come over to the fire pit and you look in, it's soaking wet. So what you do is you find some of this pine pitch this has been getting rained on for hours now. So if you have dry stuff under the tarp and you have some pine pitch, it might be slightly damp, but the pine pitch should light enough to help you get that fire started. have this arrow shaft carved out. Now what I'm going to do... Just put this as snug in there as I can. Make sure it's straight. footage is going to be a little shaky because there's a bit of a storm going on. But my feathers are kind of wet. I'm chewing some moose in you. And I'm not going to use any glue at all. And I'm just going to wrap that. I'll show you what it looks like when, uh, when I'm done with it because I'm recording this with my hand. Now usually I'll do these a little deeper and a little thinner of a point, but this one's a replication. This would have actually been a, uh, a spear point, but it'll fly and then it'll kill an animal.
I just wrapped it with no glue. I'm trying to get some good light for you here so you can see the... There you go. Now these here, I took uh, very big very big flakes off to thin it. Then on the other side, I took really little flakes to sharpen it. And you could see little tiny shots of rock taken off. And on this side, bigger shots of rock taken off. Now this is, it is just a replication. But if you have a, uh, a high powered bow, this will work. This will definitely work. It's on a uh, bamboo. And like I said, it's a little wet. It's not. It's not going to dry for a while. Man, if you ever get bored during a thunderstorm on a mountain on a lake, do some flint mapping. Make an arrow and go on. So I just wanted to uh, test this rhyolite point that I made. Cut right through the sinew. But uh, I just wanted to test how strong it was. Seems pretty strong. How the hell am I going to get that out of there? I fired it um, from a 70 pound bow at about 5 yards. Maybe I'll give it one more shot. So I tried regrinding re the edges here to make them uh, a little more dull so they don't cut through the sinew. I'm going to put it right back in now. Alright, so I'm going to test the strength of this stone. It's rhyolite from North Carolina. And I'm just, it, it's not dried completely yet, but I'm just testing the strength. Alright, see how it did. That's in there. So this is the kind of stuff I like to work. If this was obsidian, this would be in a thousand pieces. There's not even damage. One of the things I like about this is I tie the fore shaft around the walking stick. Pretty much so that this is covered and you're just walking with this pointing down so you're safe. And you have a walking stick which is sturdy and good and then if you need this added protection you just pop it in and then you have a spear that has like a seven foot reach. And then if you don't need it, you just pop it back out and you have a walking stick. Tie it back on and you're good to go hike.
so we came up a couple thousand more feet to try to find a good campsite. We found a good one here. And I'll show you what these primitive campsites look like. And this one's really good. Um, here's where you set up your tent and just a little fire pit. Now this one's extra good because we can walk down this trail here and down at the end of the trail here is another fire pit. So that means we can cook down here. Yeah, this looks good. We could cook down here. There's a really nice view. Another trail going down even further. I haven't looked down there yet. But if you look in the distance, we're pretty high up. of the road coming up as I drove over it and for a second we got stuck in the flash flood. All right, so what do we do? <laughs> this guy, is this the same guy? And I peeled out and I got out of it. But if I would have been in there a second longer, I would have walked my car away. And, uh, you know, after this, I was like, okay, we better start to head back and regroup and prepare for our fall trip. Wow. Man, that was crazy. <laughs> 